Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Today, inshallah, I want to talk about uh, cryptocurrency, Bitcoin in the future, and the Islamic view on this whole issue of cryptocurrency. Let me go straight to the point. Over here, I'm not talking about uh, us as individuals. No, I'm not talking about individuals, you or me. I'm talking about the system. So keep this in mind. I'm talking about the whole system. And when we're talking about the future of a currency, uh, like cryptocurrency, or the dollar in this case, when we're talking about the future of a currency, or we're talking, first we have to look at the currency itself. Okay? Number one, the currency that we have in our hands, the dollar, it is also un-Islamic. Un-Islamic as a system. Because it's riba based. The whole system is riba based. And riba based means making money in unfair ways. Okay? You're able to increase. Riba means to increase. So you're able to increase it using criminal activity or just being unfair. So whenever you want, you print the money. That, the system. So I'm not asking, I'm not talking about mortgage or individual issues. I'm talking about the system is itself a system of riba. And this is what specifically when Allah says, فَعْزَنُوا بِحَرْبٍ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولُ No, Allah has waged a war against riba. This is specifically what Allah is referring to the system. يَمْحَكُ اللَّهُ riba. Allah will destroy the riba system. Which is why they have to come up now with another system where cryptocurrency plays a role. Because the cash society, the former economic system, has, is beginning to die out. Because... The paper money is not backed by gold, and the Islamic currency is gold and silver. And when paper money is not backed by gold, it means what? The, you can print money whenever you want. If there is anything the dollar is backed by, it is the oil of Saudi Arabia because of the contract and agreement that they had in 1973 via Kissinger, in which the American petrodollar system came into. Mind you, that whenever they print money, they're creating debt. So it's not really mad. Okay, it's not wealth that they create. They create debt and give it to you as credit and give it to the governments as credit. But it's not money in the real sense of the word, but it's debt. Okay, so I just wanted that to be clear. Cryptocurrency will probably be the next phase of money in which Israel will be on top because Israel is already on top when it comes to technology and this is a technology-based currency and a technology-based technolo technology based, uh, you can say mecha mechanism, okay? So the petrodollar, uh, we had an economic system during the British and then we had a different petrodollar-based economic system in the United States and now in the future, cryptocurrency will probably be in the hands of Israel to a greater or less degree. So just so that everybody is on the same page, <clears throat> the origins of the petrodollar system go back to the Bretton Woods. Bretton Woods is British. They were ruling the world kind of at that world. Then America with the petrodollar system was ruling the world. And the agreement was that... Uh, you know, you have to sell oil in the dollars. And so the whole world is buying oil and the dollar is very much needed. Which replaced the gold standard with the U.S. dollar as the reserve currency. So in other words, instead of the U.S. reserve, the oil of Saudi Arabia became, and the OPEC countries became the American reserve system. So if you uh, also look up the 1973 agreement here, you know, so the United States under Nixon struck a deal uh, under the leadership of uh, of uh, Kissinger, uh, under Nixon, a deal in 1973 with Saudi Arabia, under the terms of the deal, the Saudis would agree to price all of their oil exports in U.S. dollars exclusively and be open to investing their surplus oil proceeds in U.S. debt securities, maintaining the petrodollar as America's primary goal. Okay, so this is uh, what's going on. But just like you can print a dollar for by pressing a button and make it into a debt for the government, as you know, the American Federal Reserve Bank is an independent company, 
It's not an arm of the U.S. government. If these are things you don't know, please do your research. But those people, those of you who know this, will be able to understand what I'm trying to say, that because the Federal Reserve Bank is a uh, independent organization, it does have some rules and regulations because it deals with the government, but the U.S. Treasury is separate. The Federal Reserve Bank is an independent, independently owned uh, entity. Okay. In the same way, bitcoins uh, are an interesting fact. Uh, now, what is happening in the world with bitcoins and what is the Islamic stance of bitcoins? The first problem we run into Islamically when we talk about bitcoins is that who do you really own a bitcoin? Because there's no direct tamlik. This is the first question the scholars of Islam will ask. Uh, is that you must have possession of what you are able to sell. And so, you know, in the digital world, the idea of possession uh, has to either be modified from the traditional understanding of possession, like you can't sell something you don't really possess. And so, or we have to change the, our understanding of what possession is. What is tamlik? Can you have tamlik of something that you never actually see and that only exists in the internet? I think most people would say yes to that. You know, most people would say, yeah, that's, uh, that's an acceptable, uh, fact that now that we live and after, you know, COVID-19, the whole world got on the internet. So everything is going towards the internet. Basically, everything is going into this beast with with all hairs and all wires you can say and uh, this is part of the jasasa the surveillance system uh, people think that bitcoin is going to protect them in the sense that it will protect them that the government is not involved but you will see slowly bitcoin is going to evolve into national currencies now the bitcoin also represents the fall of America. So uh, the first question Islamically is a possession. Can you really own something you don't possess? And uh, then there are two other factors. Number one, uh, can we live without Bitcoin? Is there a need to deal with this? If there's doubt in something, you should leave it. Or has this now become a reality that cannot be just left? Hmm. That is also a hard question to answer. Let me answer that question with uh, the Supreme Court of the United States, their verdict on uh, making um, the Fannie Mae and Fred, uh, Fannie Mae and uh, Freddie Mac uh, pri that were privately owned and, and you know, for profit corporations to nationalize them. Why? Because we all know the 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 whole housing collapse that happened in 2007 it almost bankrupted the united states the united states has the biggest uh debt out of all the countries uh, we are facing a high a, a, we are moving towards inflation uh it's already being said that we're moving towards uh inflation of the type that we had in the 1970s fred chair powell says it's very very unlikely uh, the U.S. will see the 1970s style inflation. That's what they're hoping for. But we also know that things are also what getting more expensive for businesses, especially restaurants. Inflation on the menu as U.S. restaurants, uh, you know, as as the U.S. restaurants are facing uh, things at higher costs. You know, the Fed always uh, doesn't tell the whole truth. Inflation worries soar with 85% of Americans somewhat concerned, of course, inflation's because when you know your economy is closed, inflation is going to happen uh, the, the, because debt will be increased when everybody is being given free paychecks. It's not for free. I mean, the, the government is taking on the debt and then the government uh, will be led to a situation where inflation has to occur. Now, uh, will people go into difficulty if they don't deal with cryptocurrency? That's another difficult question to answer. 
If you read the fourth industrial revolution, if you read about the great reset, if you read about all these things, it becomes clear that the whole world is going to move in the direction of cryptocurrencies. This is very obvious. It, the world is going to become cashless. Not that they're going to say you can't use cash anymore. Both of them will be side by side. There's the cash and here's the cryptocurrency and maybe other forms of currencies like you have the credit cards and all of that. But slowly cash will be moved away it will be it'll be you know put into your daily life that you won't realize the day-to-day -day, uh, moving away of the cash and next thing you know you are using cryptocurrency for everything and these changes are going to be are going to come relatively fast i'm thinking within you know allah knows best between five to twenty years pretty much for sure clearly one thing is clear the whole world is going towards cryptocurrencies, except uh, certain uh, people in power want to bring down Bitcoin specifically. Let there be a distinction between cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin. Bitcoin and created this whole thing, but there's no uh, entity that actually owns it or is responsible for it. And because of the all of the blackmailing that's been going on, uh, uh, a lot of the elite are they're not happy with bitcoin and they're very interested in bringing bitcoin down and focusing on other forms of bitcoin currencies so just as one example there are several examples out there us has recovered some of the millions paid in ransom to colonial pipeline hackers so colonial pipeline was an oil company that was being ransomed for information that they had and they use that as leverage to get money from people using Bitcoin. And when it comes to Bitcoin, there's no one to go to. And so uh, Bitcoin is uh, kind of like not in the good books. Department of Justice seizes 2.3 million in cryptocurrency paid to ransomware ex extortionists uh, dark side. So Bitcoin's future is probably going to be bleak how Bitcoin has fueled ransomware attacks. So this is just a few examples on this issue. So they don't have a problem with all of the uh, cryptocurrencies, but specifically Bitcoin, okay? But, you know, uh, Bitcoin was made by this unknown person and uh, many companies around the world have been blackmailed to pay in Bitcoins. And maybe even that is just actually a setup to bring down Bitcoin. And then, you know, uh, China has the most miners of Bitcoin. And also, I want to mention here that, uh, of course, the elitist will run everything. And the reason is that uh, the way you make money in Bitcoin uh, can really be uh, harnessed by the, the elite. Okay, you buy the robots and you buy the expensive, expensive, super expensive computers that no one can afford. And you start making money in cryptocurrency. So obviously, the globalists would want not the money, but the control of the money. Okay, so uh, Bitcoin it was, you can say, the first initiation of this uh, alternate to the dollar type of currency. Okay, now let me, uh, before I go into more Islamic aspects, let me just go into just random different points about this particular currency and then some final words, uh, and then the rest of you, because I'm no expert. I'm learning uh, just as much as any of you. Uh, Bitcoin, so if you have any thoughts that you think are important, please share them with me in uh, my comment section. Please subscribe to my videos, and uh, inshallah ta'ala, you will benefit uh, greatly from that. Bitcoin is a threat to national security, because why? the international currency of the world is the dollar and when the if the dollar could be replaced by anything it is not another paper currency it would be another digital currency i'm going to talk more about this later on when i show you a particular video on this subject okay but i think this is pretty clear to understand that the u.s dollar is the currency of the world and the only thing that can replace it is a digital currency the time has come to stop the use of Bitcoin as a private currency before it spreads into not only the U.S. economy, economy but the entire global financial system. So 
anyone that's trying to destroy the American economy and bring America down and create another form of economy, which is what the U.S. did to the British, okay, and uh, and this is what Israel will now do to the U.S. very soon. It's already preparing its ways for that, unfortunately. Now, uh, so, so now let me show you this, okay. Uh, why Bitcoin is different from other cur cryptocurrencies. Bitcoin is different from other cryptocurrencies. I'm just going to say it as simple as that. And therefore, the elite, they don't like Bitcoin specifically, but they're okay with the other cryptocurrencies because if there's an ever, ever an issue of them being blackmailed, as you'll see, or other issues, then they know where to go and who to go and who to sue. And with Bitcoin, there's no one to sue. There's nothing. It's There's, there's no parties that are responsible or that you can... Uh, so they're not happy with Bitcoin and they want to bring down Bitcoin. And this is the reason for many of uh, China's latest uh, um, uh, announcements. And also China has majority of the miners. So they're making money. Uh, there's also, going back to this previous issue, I just want to uh, show you this. This is from the federal, uh, uh, the federal bank, uh, the uh, the uh, the chairman, okay. So the, the sense of that comment was really that I feel that we have an obligation to stay on the forefront of policy and technological innovation and developments as regards payments, cross border payments, CBDC, all of those things, rather than that I felt anything needed to happen quickly or imminently. In fact. I, I actually do think this is one of those issues where it's more important for the United States to get it right than it is to be first. Um, given the dollar's important role globally, it's essential that we remain on the frontier of research and policy development. The dollar is the world's principal reserve currency, and there continues to be large uh, global demand for Federal Reserve notes. There's about $2 trillion worth of Federal Reserve notes in circulation, and we estimate that somewhere close to half of that value in notes is held outside of the United States. <clears throat> Use of and trust in the dollar from uh, comes from the reliable rule of law, strong and transparent institutions, deep financial markets. Strong and transparent means transparent, <laughs> meaning security over you, watching over you, also means that. And an open capital account. A healthy and efficient payment system demands these features which reach far beyond the merely technological. So we do think it's the point only being here that they're thinking about it. The Federal Reserve is thinking about issuing this. It's a serious matter. You know, this uh, issue where with, you know, you, you solve a problem and you make like so much money. Only the rich can get richer off cryptocurrencies. OK. And so um, over here. The other thing that's always mentioned about cryptocurrencies is that, of course, why everyone from Elon Musk to Janet Yellen is worried about Bitcoin's energy use. And the brothers that I've talked to that usually have these machines that make Bitcoins, they always talk about, well, it uses a lot of energy, a lot of electricity, and you're, you have to make sure that it's worth, uh, you know, the electricity bill that will come. Okay, so uh, the point being, that uh, that they're 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 worried about energy use. I don't know if this is a ploy or if this is like a uh, really something that they're worried about for some reason, or if this is just uh, their way to uh, kind of use the media to control uh, the prices and so on and so forth or manipulate the market. It is true that you can have so much Bitcoin running, like in China where many cities, they have to sometimes, it's almost coming to the point of overload, right? So if you get even more miners of Bitcoin, it could be a problem. This gives Israeli cryptocurrency uh, maybe giving Facebook a run for its money. So Israel is coming up with its own national. Israel has already tested a digital shackle cryptocurrency. The concept of issuing such a currency has been in discussion since 2017 but has decided to accelerate its research and proper preparation for the potential issuance. So 
So they, Israel is very interested in doing this. China obviously is doing this. Many of the other countries are also doing this. Israel has already conducted a pilot test of a digital shekel cryptocurrency. So the world is getting away from Bitcoin into other types of currencies that will be much more controlled compared to Bitcoin. Allahu Akbar. Bank of Israel has already tested digital shekel. Okay. So this is the future because what did the Prophet say? Imran al Bayt al Maqdas, the building of Jerusalem. And part of that is going to, a big part of that is going to be this crypto again. And then, of course, there are some countries that are trying to use their dams for energy to make bitcoins. Uh, so you can see that the elitist would be interested in all, the, all of this. Bitcoin mining is Scandinavia's uh, crypto boom coming to an end. Basically, Scandinavia, Scandinavia is a very cold country, a good place to uh, do mining for bitcoins because it takes less energy because it's very cold. Um, El Salvador plans to use electricity generated from vol volcanoes. Um, China becomes the first country in the world to test a national uh, cryptocurrency. The six countries, uh, these six countries want a national cryptocurrency. Of course, the U.S. is trying to not go there because it means to create something other than the dollar. Venezuela is trying to, of course. Dubai is also wanting to do this. Uh, the Marshall Islands, right? Uh, Tunisia wants to create the Idinar, Senegal, uh, China, right? And then, of course, they didn't mention Israel, but they're all interested in creating their own digital currency that they can then control. But I wanted to say something about China. China has, uh, I don't know how to say these words, but Sina, Webu, which is the uh, replacement of Twitter. Okay. And then China has uh, the Google uh, replacement uh, called Baidio. Okay. Or something of that nature. And Wexian, which is a replacement of WhatsApp. And uh, YouTube is replaced by Yuko. Tudo. Um, the point is, is that uh, China specifically, and if you understand the Silk Road project that's between China and Israel, but China is replacing everything outside China with its own versions of Google and Twitter and everything. And China has also come out with its two, uh, its national uh, cryptocurrency. So what's interesting when you consider the Silk Road uh, you know, uh, working between Israel and China, both of these countries, big, powerful countries, have come up with their own cryptocurrencies. So this is going to lead the way to the future. It's inevitable. And this will be much more controlled than cash. You know, you can have cash hidden somewhere. No one will know. Who needs cryptocurrency, Fed coin, when we already have a national digital currency? Right? Uh, so they're thinking about creating a national digital currency, of course, in the U.S. Uh, India might ban private cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin and develop a national digital coin. So what is the final result? The final result is this is the future. Uh, as long as the Internet exists, uh, and you can assume the Internet will exist for at least some time, uh, as long as the internet exists, this will be a form of, uh, the internet provides a form of tamli, of ownership, of digital currency, digital money. And this is something that we have to come to terms with uh, in terms of an expansion of this universe of the internet. And, uh, but at the same time, uh, there are a few things. Number one, at the end of the day, the system will fail. I'm not saying it's going to fail today or tomorrow or two years or four years or ten years from now. Allah knows best. But it will fail one day. And all the digital currencies. So as we move away from cash and we go on the internet and one day the system will fail and it will be a day of chaos. It may be worth mentioning the first system the petrodollar system has already failed and is failing and is falling and is going to be replaced by cryptocurrencies. And the leader of that in terms of technology, if you're aware of my other videos, I've talked about this in detail, is Israel. There's no question about it. The new Silicon Valley is Israel. Israel is the new Silicon Valley. And if it has to do with the Internet, they are going to be on the top of it. They're, they're on top of security. 
they're on top of internet security security they're on they're 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 going to be leading this and the rise of israel is the fall of what yathrib this is what the prophet said sallallahu alaihi wasallam so when medina goes down that means saudi went down and if Saudi went down, the U.S. economy went down. Okay, so this needs to be kept in mind. Let me just show you very quickly. This is Silicon Wadi, the Valley of Silicon, which is, you know, with an area of the highest concentration of technology companies in the coastal plain of Israel, similar to the Silicon Valley in the United States of California. Okay, and is the reason Israel is nicknamed the startup nation meaning startup of all these technology companies. So uh, Israel does have a head start on this. There will not remain a single city except we will destroy it. Except we will destroy it before the Day of Judgment. Or we will punish it before the Day of Judgment. So that downfall of all the cities around the world in all those that situation is going to occur but before that there will be this slight rise uh, through especially cryptocurrencies like if you have somebody who knows how to trade cryptocurrencies uh, properly uh, then you can make consistent money on cryptocurrency it's almost like free money even though it is of course like the stock market uh, it is mostly haram. It's interest-based. Uh, the cryptocurrency as a whole is all making money from mo money in the sense that you answer some, your computer makes money for you, right? So it's like free money and there's no risk involved. And so it's very questionable things. I'm not going to go into the fatwa aspect of this, but simply the fact that the system itself is that it's provided is fake and will Therefore, it is like riba based and therefore it will fall. And they know the whole cash system has failed. And so that's going to fall and is falling. And so now they're replacing it with cryptocurrencies. And now they're going to come up with national cryptocurrencies. So uh, those cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin that are like overly bubble have too much of a bubble. Of course, those are big problems. But if someone was to move their assets into cryptocurrencies and has somebody trading for them that knows the proper way to trade it, um, as long as they're not doing bitcoins, coins, and other volatile coins and using stable coins instead, um, that could be okay Islamically in the sense that it's as okay as uh, the dollar dollar itself. The existence, I mean, the, the very existence of dollar is questionable as money. Or it can as okay as investing in the stock market, you can say some of these halal funds and so on and so forth. But to for Muslims to totally ignore the entire arena of cryptocurrencies uh, is going to be a mistake. Um, so uh, the same thing here. The whole system itself is questionable. It's still going to be in the hands of the elite and eventually it will fall. And so therefore... Whether you are have cash or whether you have cryptocurrencies, ultimately you want to transfer all your assets into gold and silver and into actual commodities, like uh, you know, commodities like food, and so on and so forth, herbs, honey, so on and so forth. So, um, is it okay for a Muslim to use cryptocurrencies in these particular times we live in? Yes, knowing the fact that. Uh, you don't control the outcomes and probably the outcomes will be uh, they're not logical they are controlled by another group and uh, the outcome can be negative at any given time and so whatever you invest uh, you know then you have to think about it like I said unless you have a, a, a trader who will give you consistent results and has the experience to do that uh, most people will probably fail in the long term with cryptocurrencies. And uh, so this is basically it. Uh, the system is going to fall. And so it's better, like um, like I have some of my uh, assets in cryptocurrency. And uh, the brother who's trading the cryptocurrencies for me uh, is doing pretty well. 
Um, but the point is that this system is going to fall. So whether you put money in stock market or you put in cryptocurrencies, they're just as uh, un-Islamic from the perspective of origin and essence. But from the perspective of practicality, they exist. And, uh, you know, if somebody pays you in dollars or somebody pays you in cryptocurrencies, there's no difference between that. So no matter what method you're using for earning, and yes, uh, cryptocurrency has certain advantages over all other forms of, of income. There's no question about that. But no matter what you're doing, you have to move your assets to gold and silver and to other commodities so that you can make your hijrah. There should be Muslims who are learning cryptocurrency, learning the blockchain technology to be at the forefront of this. And there will be many advantages of that. So that's it. Um, you know, inshallah ta'ala, I'll talk more about this um, and uh, maybe answer more questions. Those of you who have more insight than me, more understanding than me, should uh, inform me and educate me on this. Inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.